you know, you've heard the same comments I have about, you know, co coach not being a great coach and so forth and so on, which I think is absolutely absurd. Yeah. But when you watch his coaching job before you guys, and then you see the total shift mm -hmm. in, you know, not just what he did offensively, but what he did defensively to fit that eight or nine great athletes and great mm -hmm. players that was on that 89 team. You know, just tell a little bit about your time with Coach Henson, what you saw when you were there and what you saw while you were part of that, that 89 team. Well, I knew uh, coming in, Coach knew about me. He tried to get me in before I went to Northern. And he came in, and uh, I remember the first practice I had uh, when Kenny Norman and Doug, those guys were seniors and uh, wide seniors. And I come in, and I just destroyed practice. I mean, I turn it out. And, you know, me and Snake is going at it, you know, back and forth and talking stuff. You know, that West Side coming out of him, that West Side of Roar coming out of me. And, uh, but me and Snake were friends prior to that. And, I mean, we were both competitive. And he'll tell you today that I made him work hard every single practice. And, you know, coming in and coach is like, man, this guy got two years of this guy to play? And, you know, Coach and I never had a – we had one disagreement, and that's because I missed the dunk. And then he started yelling at me, and that pissed me off. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Coach Collin had to calm me down. But I told him, I said, man, I ain't going back in. Forget it. I sit over here on the bench. You want me on the bench? I'm going to sit over here. And, you know, Coach Collin and I, we were playing Wisconsin. And uh, we was up 10, and then Wisconsin going a 14-0 run. And, you know, all of a sudden, hey, Ken. Hey, Ken, and I'm ignoring Coach Henson, and he called me about four or five times, and then the players are calling me. I said, man, I ain't going in, man. Forget that. And then Coach C walks down, and, you know, um, he make one of the walk-ons move and sit next to me, put those big arms on me, and he said, back, man, we need you. I said, Coach, man, I'm not going in, man. He don't want me out there. I ain't playing. And then he looked at me in the eyes. He said, hey, back, man, I need you, man. I need you. And I said, Coach, the only reason I'm going back in is because of you. Not because of him. And I walk past Coach Henson and he's saying stuff and I don't at that point I'm I don't hear nothing. I go in the game and we go on a twenty oh run. And that was that was the only time he and I ever had any kind of disagreement. And the point was he wasn't mad at me for missing the dunk. He was mad because he said, Well, what you just did, I got thirteen, fourteen other players gonna try to do the same thing you do because you're the leader. And that was his point, but at that point I was I was mad because I missed it. Then I was mad because he took me out. And then third, he was yelling at me. And I'm like, Coach Hill, I already know I missed the dunk. Everybody that sent me home know I missed the damn dunk. You ain't got to show me off. But his point was he and I met right before we went to the media. And he was like, well, you know, Kenny, um, the players all look up to you. They want to do what you do. And he said, I can't have them doing that. He said, I know you can make it. He said, but I don't want them to try something they can't make. And I said, Coach, you know what? You're right. I understand. I apologize. We went into the media. And the first question out of all the media to him and myself, what were y'all yelling at each other about? What was the conversation about? I saw nothing. He just told me he loved me. I told him I loved him. You know, and that was it. But, uh, I mean, I had the most respect for Coach. Um, and, you know, people said, man, if y'all had a different coach, uh, you guys probably would have won. I said, no, it wasn't the coaches. Um, I said, he prepared us for the two years I played for him, offensively and defense. I mean, this guy was a wizard, a beyond wizard. Yes. I mean, he could give you a defensive plan, and all of a sudden, you, you beat a team by 20 that, you know, you're not even supposed to beat. And they, they're looking at the box scores, you know, Nick got 28, I got 30, uh, Kendall got 21, Lowell got 19. And it's all those points came out of our defensive scheme. You know, we scored it, but our defense – uh, that he set us in, you know, was, was the point. I mean, Coach, Coach was a wizard. And I told people, proud of him, uh, you know, getting into the Hall of Fame. And I said, hey, man, this, this, this is one of the greatest coaches um, in college basketball that doesn't get the recognition he deserves. You, you, know? you and I have both had very similar conversations with people. Um, as a matter of fact, today I was on um, someone else's podcast earlier. And they asked me that very thing. What, what was it about, you know, your, your time at Illinois? And I, I'm sure you will agree with this. Mm -hmm. I told them, Coach Henson is one of the best coaches I've ever played for. 
And, you know, and that's, and, you know, I went on to play 14 years professionally and none of them could hold a candle uh, to coach. One, we were always prepared. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter who we played, we were prepared defensively. And you know this, and I know what you're going to say when I say this. When the teams would come up, whether they signal with their hands or they called out a play, we started calling out their players because we knew every single thing that they were going to do. <laughs> yes. I mean, he made sure, and, and like you stated, you were prepared for anything the other team was going to throw in. You went through it in practice. You, you ran the scout team, ran it. And you knew when they came up, whether they, like you said, they call out a play, a number, a name, whatever it was, you was like, oh, yeah. Oh, and, and team was like, man, I, I know we was playing Indiana, and uh, Jay Edwards was like, Coach, they know all I play. <laughs> 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 and his reply back to Jay, he's like, and that's a damn thing, because they running it better than y'all are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. That, that yeah. doesn't surprise me, because we, we, you know, the same thing. I mean, we'd be telling God, they come up, call their plays, we start yelling out their plays, and would jump and know exactly what they were going to do. And that's part of being a coach. And also being a coach is like you said, you have one disagreement with, with coach. I had one. And, and my four <laughs> years, and my four years that was I was there. And just like you, it was Coach Collins, Coach C that came <laughs> down and was like uh big junior. We we need you to get back in there and do what you gotta do. I'm like, uh, but coach, I'm like, I'm getting yelled at for something that wasn't my fault, you know. Uh, and and like you, and this is what I told them on the other podcast. Coach will get on you. He never used mm -hmm. curse words, but he would get on you. And afterwards, there was always an explanation of why yep. he got on mm -hmm. you. And it was normally, mm -hmm. as you said, because he wanted you to do and be better. Yep, that was it. That was it, 100%. You know, so that, that 89 team, man, like I said, was one of my faves. As you guys are rolling through the season, and I mean rolling, I mean you guys were putting it on people. You had some 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 buzzer beaters, of course, with Nick's shot and some others, some buzzer beaters down in, and then you get to the NCAA tournament. What what was the thought process going into the tournament um, when you guys got there? Well, our process was, you know, we lost to um, Villanova the year before. Uh, we had a big lead, and we missed a bunch of free throws. And uh, before that first game against Ball State down in Indianapolis, you know, we were like, hey, man, we don't want to keep nothing close. You know, we don't want to chance nothing. And let's do what we have to do. Let everybody else get, get their playing time so we can rest because we got another game coming up, you know, in a day or so. And that was our motto. Go out, compete, play hard, do, do your job. So when it came down to it, Nobody had to worry about you making a free throw, hitting a basket. You know, it, it would never come to that because we were playing so hard and we had such a, a good lead, you know. And um, everybody, you know, they, they knew what we were going to do. You know, it's like we had already played the game. We were just finalizing it. Right. And, you know, so, I mean, uh, I mean they, we were prepared, man. We were mentally prepared. Uh, to play the tournament and start at the first tournament game up in Indiana. So you, you beat the bricks off of Michigan two times during the season. And we fall short um, in, in that in that game. What's your thoughts? Um, and I know, you know, of course, everybody's devastated during the game and after the game. But what's, mm -hmm. what's your thought process when it came to the fact that it was the end? That was That was the end of college basketball for you. Well, you know what? It wasn't, uh, you know, the loss didn't hurt me. What hurt me was knowing that I would never be able to put on the University of Illinois uniform at that point after that game. And, uh, you know, as, as I told in my uh, statement to the guys afterwards, you know, I'm going to miss playing with y'all. But you guys got an opportunity to get back here next year. Uh, the same way you had new additions coming in and this here and that. And I said, hey, one game don't determine who we are. You know, we didn't win. We won the champion, but this one game is not going to define who the 89 team is. I said, our love for each other, our coaching staff, our family. I said, that always live on. I said, we just didn't get the job done. And that's it. Yeah, I, I, second, I second that feeling of, of, 
at the end of not being able to put that jersey on, bro. 